Hi, I'm Allison Lamb and I teach the middle school theater classes at Baylor and I also am the director of the middle school play and I help out with the upper school musical. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about um, some different aspects that go into the theater that people sometimes forget about and that's in the technical side. Um, a lot of times in the theater you'll see plays or even in movies and television you'll see shows that have a lot of food in the background. And what we don't take into consideration is that's a huge budget if you have to buy fresh food for every single time you do something. And sometimes plays can run from six months to a year long, especially if they're Broadway shows. And that would be a great deal of money thrown into the food budget. We have to have food that looks real to the audience from however many feet away, but is reusable, that we can use every single night. So today we're gonna be making spaghetti and meatballs, because who doesn't love a little spaghetti and meatballs? However, our ingredients are gonna be yarn, school glue, parchment paper, some air dry model magic clay, and some paints. The reason why I've chosen these particular ingredients is because they're non-toxic, and a lot of times when people make imitation food or fake food, it's made with resin or chemicals, and these are all things that are safe to use inside of a closed classroom, as opposed to in sometimes in our scene shop, which is behind me, um, there's a ventilation system or a big back door that we can open up. These things can be made at home in your, hopefully, kitchen and not your living room. So we're gonna start with our meatballs first. Our meatballs are made out of model magic. You can also use air dry clay if you want to. I should tell you as we make this, you're gonna wanna have a couple of hours of drying time in between because you, when you start layering the stuff together, um, it'll bleed into each other. So you wanna have a couple of, at least a couple hours, maybe even overnight to dry some of these things. So the first thing we're gonna make are three meatballs. And our meatballs, you're just gonna shape them. And if you've I think a lot of you have seen a meatball before. They're not perfect circles, right? So we wanna make them look as realistic as possible. So I like to use my fingernails and get in there and give some little ridges. So it looks a little bit like this. And then you'll set those aside on your little handy dandy drying plate and let them dry. The Model Magic won't take as long as if you use air dry clay. So we will shape these and varying sizes are great. The more realistic you can get, the better. So we've got our meatballs that are gonna dry right over here. Then the next thing that we're gonna make is our spaghetti because that will take the longest to dry out of any of the things that we're doing. So our spaghetti is made with just plain acrylic yarn. It can really be any color because you're gonna tint your glue paint mixture in just a moment to look more like pasta. I got plain old white yarn because it's the easiest and cheapest thing there is. But if you have any yarn laying around the house, you can use that color. And this is how I like to measure my spaghetti. <laughs> Wrap it around your elbow and in your thumb a couple of times so that you get a good amount of your spaghetti. Once you have it in your little ring, so you should have a nice little ring of spaghetti, you're going to cut the bottom and then you'll come and cut the top again. And I like to stick it on a plate to make sure that it looks about the amount that I want. Now that doesn't look like enough to me, so I'm going to make a little bit more and we'll add to it. And you probably want to add a little bit more than you think you would normally have because once it gets wet, it'll kind of shrink down a little bit. So we have made these particular art projects slash food props at some of the summer camps we have at Baylor. Um, we've also done a, uh, a donut that we've made with um, upholstery foam. And I have a link to a food prop cookbook that we can put at the end. If you are interested and looking to make some more fun little recipes, there's a popcorn recipe, the donut, um, some cake recipes, cupcake recipes. All right, so I like this amount for our spaghetti. I think that's a good, a good nice amount. Now we could keep it like this, but this to me looks a little bit more like rice noodles and I want it to look more like Italian pasta. So what we're gonna do, you need some sort of a cup 
Or I've also used, which I like because then you can just put it in the garbage, a plastic bag. And what you're gonna use in this plastic bag is just your regular old Elmer's school glue. And you're gonna wanna use about a full bottle. Um, it may be a little bit less, probably one of the sizes that you would get for elementary school, like that small bottle. And you're just gonna plop it right in here. And then to that, you're gonna add some kind of cream color acrylic paint. Um, I like, this is the antique white. I like it because it has a little bit of a yellow tint to it. And you're just gonna put a little blob of that in there to tint your glue mixture. And then zip up your bag and kind of squish that around a little bit to mix it up. And as you squish it up, you can see it starts to turn the color of pasta, right? So we have this finished, and now we're gonna throw in our pasta. And mix our pasta all in there. And you wanna get, make sure it gets pretty saturated. The trick is you don't want it super duper saturated because it will take a really long time to dry. But you want it just enough saturated that it kinda sticks together. And I'll show you on the finished product here in just a second how once it's dry, it all stays together. So you're gonna plop it out of this onto the plate and arrange it so it looks like a mound of spaghetti. And there we have it. So you'll set that aside and let that dry. That usually, I would say, maybe overnight. If you wanna use the parchment paper, here's what this is for. If you do not have a paper plate, you can use the parchment paper and put it down on a regular plate. But don't put this down on the regular plate because your mom or dad will be really upset with you if you do that. All right, pasta is done. So now we have our meatballs. We're gonna pretend as though these have dried and we're gonna take our two colors. I like to get two different colors of brown because when you're making meatballs, some parts get a little browner than other parts, right? So we wanna make them look as, as realistic as possible. So I start with a light color first and any, any size paintbrush you want to that gets the job done. You'll go through and paint up your meatballs, get them all covered. Once they're done, you can add, we won't do the whole paint, meatball, paintball, we won't do the whole meatball because that would take a really long time. But you'll see, it's okay if some of the white pieces show through because again, there are some fatty parts in regular meatballs that are a little bit lighter than the regular brown. So we've got that kind of medium brown color. And then I like to go back through with the darker brown and put some little crust on there, right? In a couple little places and darken it up so it gives it some dimension. So imagine that this is the whole meatball covered. And by the time it is finished, we have this beautiful little meatball here that actually probably needs a little dark on there. So that's what it will look like once it's done. Once this is dry, now we wanna make sure you don't do the red sauce and put it on top of the wet pasta because what will happen is we've discovered this over the many times that I've made this, the red sauce will soak into the, the pasta and it turns the pasta kind of a pink, weird color. So make sure that the pasta dries all the way and seals, and then you're gonna work on your sauce. Now your sauce is a delicious sponge that you're gonna cut up to be about that size. Um, so it takes a while to cut up this sponge, but you don't really want it any larger than that because you want it to look like ground beef chunks as you're cutting it up. So you will put that in all right, so you're gonna end up cutting up about half of your sponge. So maybe a good size handful of sponge, which is your meat. And to your meat, you're gonna add, again, I like to get two different colors of red to kind of combine them. This one is a little too brown for me for the sauce, and this one is a little bit too bright, bright red. And we want something that looks like pasta sauce. So we're gonna use more glue. And the glue is gonna act as our drying agent. It's gonna almost make like a plasticky texture on our noodles. Um, and then we're gonna add just a blop, no specific measuring, just blops of paint to get the color that we like. 
And then we will do a little mixing, get it all mixed together. And it will end up looking like very chunky pasta sauce that we will then pour onto our pasta. So we have our spaghetti, we've got our meat sauce, and now what really finishes it off and makes it look very realistic is we need some herbs and spices and maybe some Parmesan cheese. So I like to get a nice dark green color, maybe some black for the pepper, a little bit of white. You can even use yellow for the Parmesan. And just peel your paperback and use your scissors very carefully and do a little scrape to make your Parmesan flakes or your pepper flakes, or your oregano and basil. So we've got some of those, a little of the oregano, basil flakes, and some of the pepper. And then we go back and we take our meatballs, pretend as though this one is finished, and put those two right here and let it all dry, and you have your lovely plate of spaghetti and meatballs that from where the audience sits looks like a delicious plate of spaghetti and meatballs, and you can use it over and over and over and over for years without it falling apart. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we do projects like this during our classes and in our summer camps, and I'm so glad that you joined us today, and I hope that you had a good time. Thank you so much. What sets Baylor's theater department apart from other theater departments, I think, is that we're a really student-centered and student-focused department. We wanna make sure that students have the most hands-on experience that they can when they're here, whether that is up in our lighting booth or in our scene shop or in the costume shop. They have hands-on in the design process and in the building and in the execution of all everything that goes into every single one of our productions that's both in the middle school and the upper school um, you get hands-on time on our lighting boards and our sound boards which a lot of times uh, they're very expensive pieces of equipment that that people are a little afraid to let children touch sometimes and we feel like it's the most educational opportunity for them to be there and working hands-on on the specific items that they're working on. Because we also want to remind them that theater is not just what's on the stage. It's so many other things that happen behind the stage as well. And so many different hands go into creating one production. And that's the thing that we like to drive home to our students.